Hi, welcome to today's On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway, author of On This Day in Tudor History. Now, where am I taking you today? Well, I'm taking you to the 1st of December 1541, which was in the reign of King Henry VIII. But on this day, Thomas Culpepper, a member of King Henry VIII's Privy Chamber, and Francis Derham, who was a secretary to Queen Catherine Howard, both of those men were tried for high treason at Guildhall in London. They'd both been linked romantically with Queen Catherine. Chronicler and Windsor Herald Charles Risley records, this year, the first day of December, was arraigned at the Guildhall in London, Thomas Culpepper, one of the gentlemen of the King's Privy Chamber, and Francis Dorand, which is Derham, gentleman, for high treason against the King's Majesty in misdemeanour with the Queen, as appeared by their indictments, which they confessed and had their judgments to be drawn, hanged and quartered. Eustace Chapuis, the imperial ambassador, wrote to his master, Emperor Charles V, of the proceedings as well. He wrote, This same clerk was again sent on St Andrew's Day to tell me that the day after Culpepper and Durham would be tried for high treason, begging me to send one of my secretaries to be present at the trial. The same notice and invitation has been handed round to the ambassador of France, to the Venetian secretary, and to the gentleman of the Duke of Cleves, who is still here. All the privy councillors witnessed the trial, which, after a long discussion lasting six hours, ended in the condemnation of the two above-mentioned gentlemen, who were sentenced to be hung and quartered as traitors. Durham, which is Durham, did confess having known the Queen familiarly before she was either betrothed or promised to the King, but said he did not know that there was any wrong in that, inasmuch as they were then engaged to each other. Culpepper persisted in denying the guilt of which he was accused, maintaining that he'd never solicited or had anything to do with her. On the contrary, it was she who had importuned him through Madame de Rochefort, that's Lady Rochford, requesting him, Culpepper, to go and meet her in a retired place in Lincolnshire, to which she appointed him, and that on that occasion, he, Culpepper, having kept the appointment, she herself told him, as she had on the first instance sent him word through Madame Rochefort, that she pined for him and was actually dying of love for his person. It is thought that both will be beheaded today. So Derham and Culpepper were both found guilty of treason and sentenced, as we've heard, to be hanged, drawn and quartered, which was, of course, the punishment for high treason. Both men were executed at Tyburn on the 10th of December 1541. Culpepper's sentence was commuted to beheading because of his status, but Derham had to suffer the full traitor's death of being hanged, drawn and quartered. Both of their heads were placed on pikes on London Bridge and the quarters of Derham's body were displayed around the city as a warning to other would-be traitors. Culpepper's remains were buried at St Sepulchre in Holborn. But what about the Queen and her lady, Jane Boleyn, Lady Rochford? What was happening to them at this time? Well, Chapuis records, Dame de Rochefort would have been sentenced at the same time had she not, on the third day after her imprisonment, been seized with a fit of madness by which her brain is affected. True is it that now and then she recovers her reason and that the king takes care that his own physicians visit her daily, for he desires her recovery chiefly that he may afterwards have her executed as an example and warning to others. The queen is still at Sion House and it is believed that the king, to show clemency in her case, will make no innovation whatever with regard to her or do more than he has hitherto done until Parliament meets and decides what her fate is to be. So Queen Catherine was at Sion and Jane was being nursed back to health at Russell House on the Strand, the London residence of Sir John Russell, Lord Admiral, and his wife Anne, under the supervision of the king's own doctors. The king wanted Jane Boleyn, Lady Rochford, to be fit enough to execute. 
On the 21st of January 1542, a bill of attainder against Catherine Howard and Lady Jane Rochford was introduced into the House of Lords. According to this bill, the women were guilty of treason and could be punished without there being any need for a trial. It received the King's assent on the 11th of February. Jane was taken to the Tower on the 9th of February 1542 and Catherine was taken by barge from Sion to the Tower the following day. Both women were beheaded at the Tower of London on the 13th of February 1542. Thank you for joining me today and thank you for bearing with any noises in the background which is Teasel trying to get uh, through the cat flap to get at the cats that are playing in the garden. She's a little mink, she really is. Uh, you can subscribe to the channel by clicking round about there. You can hit the bell to be notified as videos go live and you can of course give me a like and leave a comment. Thank you so much for following me, bye bye.